what we're doing today is we're boring the hubs on a wheel of a traction engine. Uh, the wheel is the wheel's four foot in diameter, so it's quite a big lump of a thing. Uh, and the first job was actually working out how on earth we were going to get it on the table of the machine. Uh, and actually, what we had to do was make these huge, great big uh, right angle blocks to carry it. So we did that first. Uh, welded those together, machined them so they're back to square, uh, and then we have to bore out this hub. And just to make life really interesting, this uh, central bore is in cast iron, and it's a cast iron sleeve within a cast iron hub. And we wanted to machine it in situ. Just to make it really awkward, it's tapered. What we're looking at here is the large end of the taper, which is about 75 mil, three inches in diameter. And then if we go round and look at the other side, we come through to the small end of the taper, which is about 63 mil in diameter. And the depth of the hub is 300 mil, so we actually need a pretty long boring bar, and we've got this chappy here running on it. Uh, and you can imagine with something of that, that length, there's potential for quite a degree of flex. Now then, to deal with the taper part of it, uh, that means that we actually have to, as we go forward with the thing, we actually have to wind it out. Uh, and we have on here a very interesting little bit of kit called a Volhapter head. Uh, and this has the ability to, uh, you can wind it out as it, as it travels. Uh, and what we have on this end is the mechanism that winds it out. And that is uh, held static whilst the head rotates. Uh, we've actually put a long extension arm so that we can clip it round the bed of the table so we don't have to hold it. Now then, if you look at those little pins there to the left of the Jubilee clip, those are the drive pins, and each one of those, and there are 12 of them, uh, each one of those has a forward drive, it gives a forward drive, uh, outward on the, on the width of the thing, of 0 0.02 of a millimetre. There's 12 of them, so the minimum have, you can have is it winds out 0 0.02 for every revolution, and the maximum is 0.24. I think my maths is right. Uh, rather than try and explain any more the, about the wall have to head, I'm just going to give you a shot of the instruction book so I don't have to spell it to you. There we go. That's the uh, instruction book for the wall have to head. Um, no, it didn't come with the thing. It's a very old piece of kit, but isn't the internet wonderful? I managed to find this instruction. And amazingly, we also had it in English rather than uh, in German, which it would have been originally. I'm not going to spend too long explaining the maths behind it all, but uh, basically we need to match the forward speed of the of the boring tool going through the thing to the outward speed of it getting wider. Uh, and we've got a choice of things on here. I've actually set it to run at 0 0.08 millimeters per revolution. So for every rev of the boring tool, it moves forward 0.8. Um, which somewhat dictates, uh, that's the speed we worked out we needed, uh, dictates the speed range somewhat, and we're actually going to use uh, this one here, 160 RPM. Uh, that just seems a suitable cutting speed uh, for the cast iron in the bore uh, at the diameter we're working at. So we've set the forward speed at which the, the tool travels through the job, and we've set the speed at which it widens itself out on, on these clips here. Uh, and we've set it at its lowest setting of 0 0.02 millimeter per revolution. Uh, and quickly doing the math through with Ash for a 300 mil run gives us the degree of taper that we want. It's a very small taper. We're only going, uh, gaining 12 millimeters uh, from one end to the other. And to do the math, it's uh, 400 and something revolutions will take the thing through the head, and it will also then bring it out by the necessary 12 mil. Um, okay, so I'm going to set it up to run in a minute. One of the awkward bits with this as well is, of course, the fact that we're dictated to the direction we can turn uh, by the direction of the tool. So actually what this means is um, we've got to turn it in a clockwise direction, which means that the tool 
clockwise will make itself wider as it goes through. So actually, what we have to do is start at the narrow end, the far end of the, the job, and pull it back through uh, to create the taper that we want. Right, so here's the, um, the head all wound through with the tool at the starting position with the tip of it on the far side of the, uh, of the hub on the narrow side, uh, waiting to work its way back through and wind its way out to get to the wider side of the taper. Um, we've chosen actually to, rather than move the spindle in and out on the uh, boring machine, we've chosen to move the table in, uh, backwards and forwards. Uh, this works better on the cutting speeds that we need, uh, and it also makes life easier in terms of holding the fixed uh, turning circle that's going to move the uh, head in and out. Uh, we're just using the uh, digital readout um, running that back on the z-axis so we know where the repeat goes to, so uh, we know where the zero, where to stop it every time as we run it back through. So, okay, I think we're all set up, ready to run. Um, direction showing on here, not quite clear, but uh, it's showing the, um, the fact that the table is moving now away from the head, which is the direction we want it. Let's fire. Slowly working its way through. I think slowly, it's actually at 0.8 um, per revolution, it's coming through quite fast. As it's coming through and cutting, uh, this head is slowly winding itself out uh, so that it matches the taper. Taking a very, very tiny cut. We're only taking, a, 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 each time we run it, we're only running it uh, about 0 0.0102 of a mil, which we can only take a tiny cut because of the length of the head on it. So there we are, that's quietly uh, machining out the centre of that hub to make a taper that runs all the way through. There we are. It's coming towards the end of its run now. You can see the distance it's moved and it's wound out. Uh, I've got to say, we're cutting this dry, so uh, I'll just blow a bit of compressed air down here and again to clear the cuttings. Uh, I don't know whether you can see this on here, but it's very, very fine cut. There's virtually nothing coming out of that. We're on the final cleaning cut anyway, so uh, it's an even finer cut than usual. Barely taking anything out at all. There we are, come to the end of its run. There we are, ready to switch off. That's it. All cleaned out. Nice, smooth, tapered ball.